Welcome to Talking Legal with Templars. My name is Dayo Kusami. Uh, today I have my colleague with me, Okaboye Chukwani, who's an associate in our finance department. Today we're talking legal issues in the metaverse. Now, Okaboye, metaverse, first of all, explain that to me. What is it? Um, so the metaverse is basically a virtually created and digitally augmented reality where in essence you can create an avatar and do all the things you want to do in your normal day-to-day -day life you know go to the movies hang out with friends but virtually through sort of a separate digital personality okay so that sounds very much like a video game what's the interplay with this and the real world and why are we talking about it as lawyers today yeah i mean there are many people that think it's video gamey it's too techy um but it really depends on who you ask so for the core metaverse enthusiasts, um, they envision a situation where literally all the things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives currently in future are actually going to be done virtually. You know, eating, going to the movies, hanging out, working, um, trading, everything we do is going to be done on this virtual world, virtual platform. And they see it as sort of the next step in, you know, digital reality after the era of smartphones and the, you know, the internet revolutionized the world in the early 2000s. Now we go into the metaverse, really, where we transform our digital um, existence. But that's for the core enthusiasts. So it really, you know, depends on whose perspective you look at. For businesses today, um, they might look at the metaverse as, you know, a next platform for investment, you know, sort of how to, similar to how currently everyone's trying to invest in like emerging markets. After that, you know, you go into the metaverse. So people might be looking at like real estate investments, right? They be thinking, oh, can we buy property in the metaverse? Can we, you know, make asset acquisitions in the metaverse? Things like that. For people like cryptocurrency enthusiasts, they might be looking at the metaverse and say, well, in the real world, in the real world, we're competing with, you know, traditional banks, we're competing with traditional currency, fiat money to sort of make our way into being, you know, traded and recognized. But in the metaverse, we can be the dominant currency tomorrow. You know, Bitcoin can be the metaverse currency or Ethereum or whatever, you know, uh, cryptocurrency is able to take hold of the metaverse before everyone else, right? So they might be looking at it that way. Um, and then for maybe like artists, they might be looking at, you know, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, which are all the rage right now. They might think the metaverse is the real platform um, for NFTs to really take place and flourish because, you know, if you're talking about like digital art, digital ownership, what better place than, you know, a digital world. Right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank there you. are even a couple of metaverse lawyers now, you know. Really? Okay. So we're going to touch on that. Thank you for that clarity. Okay, Okaboya. So that's very informative. So we've got metaverse real estate. We've got art through the NFTs and you've even talked about metaverse lawyers. It definitely is something worthy of interest if Facebook turns their name to Meta and they are promoting the metaverse. So uh, they've always been looked at as a bold looking uh, company. So, but talk to me about metaverse lawyers. I, I, I'm trying to get my head around that. Okay. Metaverse lawyers have basically sprung up because there are lots of key legal issues that are obviously going to spring up in the metaverse um so you're looking at things like criminal and civil liability you're looking at things like intellectual property ownership you're looking at things like enforcement how is that all really going to be done um, in the metaverse right so if you think about things like civil and criminal liability in the normal world if you hit my car i take it to court you know that's what we all know in the real world but how does that work in a metaverse? If somebody steals money from me, who do I sue? Um, do I sue the digital person or do I come after the person behind the screen? Um, you know, those are the kind of questions that people are gonna be asking. There are people that would tell you there can't be any kind of liability in the metaverse because none of this is real, you know, which opens up a host of different problematic things that could occur. People could do anything to somebody, harm people, theft, and um, there would be no consequence apparently for that. So liability issues are a huge concern in the metaverse. You look at intellectual property ownership, right? We talked about NFTs already. People are gonna be trading in all sorts of things on the metaverse, um, but who owns that, right? Um, one argument could be that the creator of any particular metaverse or digital world owns everything inside it. And so you could have people arguing that, no, I'm an artist. I've drawn something in the metaverse, I should own it, right? I've created something here, I should own it. So um, intellectual property issues are gonna be 
a really 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 big thing um, when the metaverse eventually comes into play and then um, you have things like okay well even if I can prove that you know somebody did something wrong to me in the metaverse somebody harmed me um, somebody assaulted me who do I who do I go after and how do I enforce that you know where do I go um, do I go to real court do I go to a metaverse court you know what it, what, it, what is that are there metaverse lawyers are there gonna be metaverse judges how do they get qualified how do you enforce you know there's just so many potential thorny legal issues that lawyers have to be involved at this early stage okay great thank you I think we can understand the intellectual property because especially in this digital world intellectual property can be as much as 80 90 percent of the valuation of a company enforcement is key to protecting that but bring it home for me again to those of us who are not experts like yourself how realistic is all this the metaverse and the universe so to speak <laughs> <laughs> and then we can now start talking about some key legal issues okay i mean in terms of how realistic is it um right now it's very futuristic that's just the plain and simple truth it's very far out there into the future um there's lots that would have to happen legally for it to really have a concrete structure but much like many current trends you know cryptocurrency nft decentralized finance what you really need is people to buy into it right you need a lot of participation you know crypto didn't really take off until people started investing and getting Correct. into it you know so right now i think there's maybe a bit too much going on for the metaverse to really take off I mean, it may just be sort of limited to maybe video games and some other things. But, you know, people are making moves right now. I mean, a week ago or so, MTN bought some property in the metaverse. So people are making moves now, you know, early stage investors might want to move now. But uh, it's still a bit, you know, too futuristic right now. No, but I like what you said. MTN, which is the largest mobile network um, in, well, Nigeria and possibly Africa, has bought property in the metaverse. Yep. Meta formerly Facebook, has set up a metaverse. Yep. So while it's futuristic, you're right, you've made a point. I remember hearing about cryptocurrency 10 years ago and I rolled my eyes and now I wish I'd bought more of that, right? Okay. So it's about getting ahead of the curve uh, and identifying these issues. So futuristic, but it is here, isn't it? Yes. And there are actual metaverse transactions going on now with the biggest tech companies in the world Absolutely. currently in 2022. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Now, Okaboye, um, Let's bring it all home from a Nigerian law point of view, right? What are the interplays? Because uh, you and I have tech clients that we advise. And one of the questions digital companies always ask is, well, we're not based in Nigeria. How can we be subject to Nigerian law? And we always have to answer that question. Uh, but bring it home for me from a metaverse point of view and Nigerian law. How would Nigerian law interplay? Uh, now and in the future with the metaverse. I guess if you're looking at it right now You could make an argument that maybe a few a handful of Nigerian laws could really apply in a metaverse um, You have the cyber crimes act uh, 2015 um, And you have the Nigerian data protection regulation which was passed in 2019 So the cyber crimes act was basically enacted to you know bring Nigeria into the foray of cyber security protect against cyber fraud digital fraud all the different heinous offenses that are taking place rapidly all over the internet. There's lots of coverage actually from a criminal perspective in the Cyber Crimes Act in that, you know, things like cyber scams, cyber phishing, things that people might be afraid of if they go into the metaverse. Oh, people steal my money, there's no law. Actually, no, the Cyber Crimes Act, to some extent, could actually protect you if you were accessing the metaverse, maybe from a Nigerian angle or from a Nigerian portal, right? Um, and so there is some some coverage in that regard. Then you look at you know data protection and privacy, which is a big issue, you know, very big. Um, even for for Meta, formerly Facebook, you know, we know how involved they were. From a data protection angle, the NDPR, the Nigeria Data Protection Regulation, would definitely protect and cover any Nigerian personal data, you know data that can be used to recognize an individual like your name, your birth date, all that kind of information that you submit maybe when you're creating your metaverse avatar and profile. That information will be protected um, and you can enforce if anybody you know breaches your rights under the NDPR. Um, but outside of that, it's difficult to see how most traditional laws which never contemplated a metaverse you know Absolutely. would apply you know even look at the definitions of what is a legal person it's usually a natural person not a virtual person so most laws just don't cover the metaverse currently 
um, but in future if it takes off and if we get there we would have to update many of our laws to really cover uh, the metaverse you know maybe in future every Nigerian law firm will have a metaverse practice group okay yeah. so we might have a metaverse version of Templars mm -hmm. Um, and I can guarantee that we'll charge any less in the better verse, possibly more. Okay, Okaboy, thank you for that. Um, I think the key takeaways from me are, um, and, and you touched on a, uh, an important point, uh, data protection. Uh, it's very key. It's, it's huge in Nigeria now. A lot of people don't know that, but uh, Templars is constantly advising a number of international tech companies on uh, compliance with data protection. There's criminal liability. There are privacy issues as well, tied to and separate from uh, data protection. And then there is just the understanding of what the metaverse is. And I always say this, if you've got some of the largest companies in the world going into the metaverse, um, then you need to be looking at it, at it as well. And if you're looking at it, then you need to look at what are the legal issues around this new and emerging space. So um, we thank Sokaboye for running us through. I want to thank you for joining us today. We're talking legal with Templars, where we've covered legal issues in the metaverse. See you next time.